Welcome to Citation Styles. I'm Justin Rempel. So what do we mean when we're talking about citing something or citations? Uh, a citation is just another word for a reference to something else. So it means a time when we are writing and in our writing we are referring to a different source. Um, and this can take a couple different forms. Uh, one form that it can look like is a direct quote when we are using someone else's exact words. So when we do this, when we put someone else's exact words into our writing, we need to use quotation marks. We need to have a set of quotation marks before the direct quote and after, at the very start and at the very end. That's really, really important. Uh, the other form this can take is that we can use someone else's information or ideas. So if we are doing this, we need to make sure that we're putting those ideas or pieces of information into our own words. Okay? If we're not quoting directly and we're using someone else's info or ideas, we have to rephrase or reword it so that it's being told in our words. Either way, whether we're using a direct quote or someone else's information and ideas, we have to include a citation or a reference to show the source from which the words and information are coming. If we do not do this properly, we are committing plagiarism. Why is it important to cite? We need to not just use citation, but to use proper citation. This means that when we use someone else's words, ideas, information, we are referencing the correct source with the correct formatting. You hear the two parts? We're stating clearly where this information or where the ideas are coming from, and we're doing it in the proper way. That means we're using the proper spelling, grammar, punctuation, because there's a very definitive set of rules about how to cite something properly. We do this because it's really important to give credit where credit is due. That means we're acknowledging uh, other people's hard work, other people's research, other people's writing or wording, other people's ideas. If someone else came up with it, we want uh, to properly acknowledge them and give them the credit that they are due. The other reason we do this is because if we don't, then we are stealing. And we do not want to steal other people's words, information, or ideas. When we do that, when we steal their words, ideas, and we don't give them credit or acknowledgement, it is theft. And the term for that theft is called plagiarism. So this is ethically immoral, and in some cases, it is actually illegal. Plagiarism is the act of presenting someone else's words or ideas as if they were our own. So it's a form of stealing. It's also a form of lying because we're suggesting that we came up with something when in fact we didn't. Someone else did. So that could be uh, taking a direct quote from someone else and failing to put it in quotation marks and cite it as from another source. Uh, it could just be taking someone else's information or ideas and failing to acknowledge that we got it from another source. This is theft of other people's words and ideas. In some cases, this is actual, actually a criminal action. Plagiarism can involve copyright infringement uh, that means you're copying work to which others have legal rights, and that can be cause for criminal prosecution. Whichever place you're working and writing in, um, whether it's uh, a school or a business, uh, there's going to be some kind of code of ethics, and that code of ethics will always prohibit uh, plagiarism. So we've got an ethical violation going on when we plagiarize. Depending on uh, how your institution's code of ethics is set up, there might be different forms of punishment for that. Uh, plagiarism may be grounds for failing the assignment uh, or failing the course. You could be kicked out of a, a course for plagiarizing. Um, in some cases, there's been expulsions based on plagiarism where people are kicked out of uh, a school, a university. 
Uh, or in some cases, people have lost their job for plagiarizing. So it's really serious and really important that we avoid pretending as if other people's ideas and words are our own. We need to reference and cite them properly, correctly, appropriately. Now we're going to get into citation style because there are different ways of referencing other people's works. And we call these different ways of formatting, uh, citing, referencing uh, different citation styles. And depending on what citation style we're using, it's really going to affect our writing in three places, particularly when we're working on uh, papers. It's going to affect our title page, which comes at the start of our paper. The way that you format the title page is going to change depending on your citation style. The basic info is going to remain the same. You're gonna have the name of your paper on there, your name, uh, your teacher's name or your boss's name, your company's name or your school's name, the date, uh, all those basic pieces of info are gonna be on there. Uh, but how exactly it's formatted changes slightly depending on the citation style. We're not going to talk about title pages so much um, in this video, but it is important to look up and figure out exactly how to format your title page for the citation style that you're using. We're going to focus in this video on the other two. The second way where citation style really comes into play is in-text citations. So this is when we're writing the body of our paper uh, and we use a direct quote or information or ideas. And the way that you format those citations in the text of your paper changes slightly depending on your citation style. The third and final place where citation style impacts our paper is at the very end of our paper where we include a reference page. A reference page is a list of all the sources that you use. So you want to reference sources when they come up in the body of your paper. So people who are reading will know exactly when and where that info is coming from. But at the end, it's common practice to include a reference page that lists all of our sources. It's an exhaustive list of everything that we used to research the paper. And the way that you format that reference page at the end of the paper is going to change depending on your citation style. So like I've said already, there are several different types of citation styles uh, and generally they are used for different subject areas. So you really want to know, check with your teacher or your boss, your employer, um, which citation style you're supposed to be using but in general, they kind of follow these guidelines. Uh, and we're going to focus on three. They're the main three that you're probably going to encounter, uh, especially if you do uh, post-secondary, but there are others. So the three we're going to focus on are APA style, which is American Psychological Association. Um, this is the one that's commonly used in the social sciences, anthropology, economics, political science, sociology, and of course, as its name suggests, psychology. It's a really good citation style uh, for uh, referencing studies. And um, these are the subject areas that use a lot of studies in their research. Uh, the second citation style we're gonna be looking at is Chicago style, which is also called Turabian. Um, you find this in a lot of the humanities, business, fine arts, history, philosophy, religion, and social studies. So probably if you're doing work in those areas, you're going to be using Chicago style. And the third and final one we're gonna be focusing on in this video is MLA style, Modern Language Association. Uh, this comes up in some of the humanities, cultural studies, language arts. Um, it's the one that's most commonly used if you're in English courses. There are other citation styles, um, for example, you have AMA style, which is the American Medical Association style, and that one's commonly used in medicine. So if you're taking medical courses in post-secondary, post -secondary, you might come across AMA. Um, and there's also the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers style, or IEEE -E -E style, which is used in computer science and uh, engineering technology courses. So in general, those are the subject areas that use these citation styles. However, be sure, be sure, be sure with your teacher or your employer, which citation style you use before you start formatting your paper. Uh, because the last thing you want is to format your paper one way 
and then have to go back and redo it and format it a different way. The first one we're going to look at is APA style. Um, and for every style, the two forms that we're going to be looking at are in-text citations, when we reference a source in the body of our text, um, and the reference page, which is the list of sources at the end. So let's start with uh, in-text citations for APA. If we're using APA citations, and we're writing our paper, and we need to reference a source or cite a source, we're going to use a parentheses or brackets, okay? Uh, and in these brackets, we're going to put the author's last name um, and the year of publication. And those two pieces of information are going to be separated by a comma. This is enough info so that if you're interested in learning more as a reader, you can go to the reference page at the end and uh, find the full information for this source, okay? Um, note that the period comes after the parentheses. So in our example, uh, we're using some information uh, from my imaginary study, and we say anxiety affects many different human behaviors. And then in brackets, we have REMPL, 2022. So this would uh, suggest that I've conducted a study and published some research uh, in the year 2022. And uh, that is where you're getting your information from for this statement. Notice that this is not a direct quote, okay? This is just a piece of information, but it's not the writer's original information. They borrowed it from my imaginary study. So they're having to cite me. Um, another way of including information is um, doing what's called a signal phrase, where you sort of introduce the author. Um, and if you do that, right after you put the author's name, you're gonna to wanna to put the, uh, the year in brackets or parentheses. According to Rempel, 2022, and here's a direct quote, anxiety can have a profound impact on a person's life. So these are not the writer's words, they're Rempel's words from his study conducted in 2022. So we put them in brackets and we properly cite and reference our source. Once we get to the end of an APA paper, we're going to want to include a reference page. Something important to know is that reference pages are actually called slightly different things depending on your citation style. So an APA reference page is called References with a capital R. You're going to put that centered at the top of your page, not bolded, not underlined, not italicized, just the word References with a capital R centered at the top of the page. And then you're going to list all your sources in alphabetical order according to the author's surnames because that is the first piece of information that you get when you're uh, citing sources here. So for example, for this article, you can see that I've cited it. Again, this is a made up imaginary article by me. It doesn't actually exist and this source is made up. Uh, but if you were citing it, you would start with my surname, Rempel, then there's a comma and my first initial, um, then in brackets, the year, 2022, then the period, and then there's the title of my article. Notice that only the first letter of the first word is capitalized. None of the other letters are capitalized, even though this is the title of the article. And then there's a comma, and then in italics, there is the name of the uh, journal that my imaginary article was published in, Mind Magazine, that's a made up journal. Uh, then a comma, then in italics, the volume number, then in brackets, the issue number, then another comma, and then the pages of that journal where my article is found, and then a period, okay? So in this made up example, my article was on pages 135 to 142. This is how picky citation is. You need to put the correct things in quotation marks or italics uh, or in brackets with a comma or a period in the correct spots. It's very important to follow the exact formatting and that formatting is going to be different depending on what type of source you're using. If you're using a book or an article or a website, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very important to look up and know exactly how to format uh, your source for your citation style and for the type of source that you're using. Uh, Chicago style. This is the second citation style that we're going to be talking about. Um, and it's actually got two different citation styles within it. Um, 
the first type is called the author date system. It, it looks quite a bit like the other two styles that we're looking at in the sense that it uses parentheses. Um, so the information for an in-text citation is in brackets. Uh, the information that we include is a little bit different than the other ones. In this case, we want the author's surname uh, and the year of publication, and then a comma, and then the page number that we got the info from. So for example, ancient Egypt, here the quote starts, revolved entirely around the Nile River in its culture, its history, and its beliefs, end quote. Now we put our citation in brackets. Rempel, 2022, then a comma, then the page number that that quote comes from, page 75, close brackets, now the period. Very important to put that punctuation in the correct spot. Period comes after the citation, not before, okay? When you're using Chicago style, more commonly, you are going to be using the notes bibliography system, which involves footnotes or endnotes. After a direct quote or piece of information, you're going to insert a number as superscript, which is the little text above the normal text. Um, so you're gonna have a tiny little number and they go in numerical order. The first footnote or endnote is number one. The second footnote or endnote is number two, et cetera, et cetera. If you're working in Word or Google Docs or whatever, there should be a button that you can click that says insert footnote. It'll be um, under the insert tab, okay? Uh, that number that you put into the text is going to connect to a note. And that note is either at the bottom of the page that you're currently writing on. We call that a footnote because it's at the foot of the page, or it's going to be at the end of the paper. That's called an endnote. You can have a list of endnotes before your reference page. Whether it's a footnote or an endnote, it's going to contain the basic information on your source, including the specific page or page numbers from which you got your quote or information. That's very different from the reference page, which is not going to have the specific page numbers. Uh, if you cite the same source two or more times in a row, use IBID after the first uh, use. That's a, a Latin abbreviation and it just means ditto or same, repeated, that kind of thing. Uh, but then you're going to always include the page number that you got your quote or information from. Uh, so for example, um, ancient Egypt, open quotes, revolved entirely around the Nile River in the culture, its history and its beliefs, uh, end quote. And you're going to see a tiny little number two that means there's a footnote or an endnote to go look up. Uh, the Nile River was much more than a source of agriculture. And there's a tiny little number in the superscript, number three, because it's the next footnote or endnote in order. Notice that you're going to include a footnote or endnote for a direct quote, but also in the second case, just for information that's borrowed from somewhere else. This text at the bottom of my page is what a footnote or endnote would look like. So you start with the correct number, number two in this case for the footnote, and then we have my name. Again, this is an imaginary source, Justin Rempel, um, and first name first, surname second, and then a comma, and then in italics, the title of my imaginary book, Ancient Egypt and the Nile, and then in brackets, the city, where it was published, a colon, that's the dot above the dot, and then the name of the publisher, this is made up, Borderland Press, and a comma, and then the year of publication 2022, close brackets, comma, page number, period. Okay, so in this case, my direct quote was taken from page 16 of my imaginary book. Um, notice that the next reference, which was not from a direct quote, just from board information, is footnote three, it's from the same source, so I've just put IBID, I-B-I-D period, comma, and then the page number that I got that piece of information from, which is quite a different page, page 43, and the period. Very important to follow the exact punctuation. When we get to the reference page in Chicago style, it's not called references like APA. It's called bibliography with a capital B. Center that title at the top of the page. 
Uh, you list your sources in alphabetical order according to author's surnames. Notice that when we were doing footnotes or endnotes, we put first name first and then last name second. Uh, for the author, it's switched around for the bibliography. So the last name or the surname comes first and then a comma and then the first name and then a period. Okay, um, I got an example. This is from a real source. Um, it's from an article by Carly Casella. It's called Mummies with Golden Tongues Discovered in Ancient Egyptian Necropolis. The title of her article is in quotation marks. Um, and then the company that published or produced that web page is listed. It's called Science Alert. And I've got a period. And then I've got the date that the, uh, that the article was written or last modified. Um, last modified November 28th, 2022, and a period. And then I've got the hyperlink. A lot of people just put in hyperlinks. That's not enough information. A hyperlink is an important part of citing uh, an online reference, but it is not the only piece of information. You need all these other pieces. The name of the author, the title of the article, uh, the company that produced, um, the date that it was last modified or written. In some cases with some citation styles and some uh, online sources, you need to actually put the date that you accessed that web page because one thing we know about the internet, it changes and is edited all the time. So lots of citations actually require you to write down the date uh, when you accessed the web page. All right. Um, Notice also, and this is the case with um, a lot of citation styles, that on the reference page, the first line is not indented, but every line after it is, okay? So pay close attention to that formatting as well. MLA style, this is the one that we use um, in English language arts and other language arts courses. If we're doing an in-text citation, we use parentheses or brackets, just like we do with APA. Um, all you need to put in is the author's surname and the page number that you got it from. No comma, okay? That's it. So for example, Steinbeck was a master of prose and produced not just one, but several great American novels. Uh, that info we got from my imaginary source, uh, Rempel24. So that tells us who the author is, it's, it's Rempel, and what page we got it from, page 24. Notice that the period comes after the brackets. You can use a signal phrase in MLA. Uh, so you might have the author's name in the sentence already, and then you just need to include the page number at the end. Uh, so for example, Rempel says that Steinbeck, open quotes, understood profoundly the internal life of humans, close quotes. Now I've got my page number, 236 in brackets, and then the period. Okay, this is important information because it tells the reader um, what source it comes from, we know that from the author, and which page to find it on exactly. It's going to be a little bit different if you're using a web source, an online source, that does not have page numbers. If we're using MLA, our reference page is actually called Works Cited, with capital W, capital C. That's the title at the center top of our page. And just like always, we list our sources in alphabetical order according to author's surnames. Um, and we indent all lines after the first one. We also leave a line uh, spaced or gapped in between sources. So you can tell that there's lots of rules um, around the formatting of citation styles. It's really important to know which one to use and to look up very closely and research how to cite the source that you're using. It is not enough to just include a hyperlink to your page. The number one best source that we can use to look at uh, citation information is the Purdue On Online Writing Lab or OWL. Um, this has all the citation styles on it. It has sample papers on it so that you can see what it looks like in examples. Um, it's got everything you need to know about every citation style and citations change, the rules change over time. So this site gets updated every time there's a new edition of Chicago or MLA or APA. So it's up to date, 
It gives you examples. It gives you the info that you need to know. I would highly recommend using it uh, because how you format your references on your reference page is going to vary a lot according to what citation style you're using and according to the type of source that you're using. Citing a book is very different from citing a YouTube video. Okay, uh, I cannot give you an exhaustive list of how to cite everything in every citation style. That would take forever but I can point you to the Purdue OWL website because it does have all that information on it. Ask your teacher for help if you're really, really struggling. Um, do that sooner than messing up or accidentally plagiarizing because uh, plagiarism is something that we really, really want to avoid.